Hi, I'm Jeong from KAIST. In this video, I'm going to talk about neural enhanced live streaming, improving live video ingest via online learning. This is a short 10 minute video, and if you want to know the details, please watch the 20 minute video. Live video traffic has experienced a rapid growth with the rise of live streaming services such as YouTube and Twitch. With the number of streamers and viewers on the fast rise, supporting high quality live streaming has become ever more critical. Live streaming systems consist of two main components. First, the ingest side concerns the delivery of live video from original streamer to a media server. When the streamer uploads a high quality live video to the media server, the media server transcodes the ingest stream into video chunks with multiple different low qualities. Second, at the distribution side, content distribution servers use adaptive bitrate streaming to optimize the quality of experience and scale across thousands of concurrent viewers. However, there still exist key limitations in an end-to-end -end live video delivery. The stream quality is fundamentally constrained by the streamer's omnic bandwidth and its computational capacity. For example, if the network bandwidth between the streamer and the media server is scarce, or if the streamer lacks computing power on their devices to encode live stream in real time, the ingest stream quality suffers by limiting the transcoded options and restricts the quality of the entire delivery downstream. This potentially deprives thousands of viewers of their opportunity to enjoy high quality live stream. Therefore, in this work, we focus on the first hop delivery between the streamer and the media server, naming the ingest, and we propose a new live ingest framework called LiveNAS that aims to enhance the video quality of original stream at ingest. By leveraging the computing power at the ingest server, LiveNAS applies super resolution on the original stream at the ingest side before its distribution to the end viewers. Since the high quality video is now available at the media server, this enables thousands of viewers to download high quality live stream if they have enough bandwidth. However, there are two primary challenges of applying super resolution in live streaming. First, content aware DNS cannot be prepared on the fly for the new live content. It is known that super resolution DNS provide great benefit when trained and used on the same content, namely the content-aware approach. In fact, to prepare the content-aware DNA for per video, it requires 10 minutes of training for a 1 minute of video. The approach cannot be easily adopted to the live video delivery, considering its stringent delay requirement. In addition, pre-training a DNA to a video from past live sessions cannot deliver reliable quality gain compared to the content-aware DNNs. This is because the live content can be very new and different from history sessions. To address the challenge, our solution is to employ online training with fresh data while live streaming. Second, to train the DNN online, it requires powerful computing devices, but the computing power at the streamer side is heterogeneous. Instead, we can leverage the computing power at the ingest server, which is typically a cloud environment with ample computing resource. However, the challenge is that ground tooth labels for online training are not available at the media server. To address the challenge, we rely on our key observation that even a fraction of ground tooth labels are sufficient for online training. First, because video frames bear large redundancy, training with only a subset of frames still produces almost the same quality gain compared to having all frames. Second, in addition to sampling of frames, training with a fraction of ground truth labels, namely the patches, still provides a significant training gain. Combining these two factors, we can transmit ground truth labels to the media server using a fairly small amount of bandwidth. For example, sending 5% of frame for every 2 seconds with JPEG compression requires only 124 kilobit per second. Leveraging this, our solution is that the streamer sends fractional training data to the ingest server. To explain in detail, LiveNAS operates both at the streamer and the server side. 
At the streamer side, the camera captures the high-quality stream before its compression, and LiveNAS samples partial high-resolution data, which is used for training. Then, the streamer sends the sampled training data patches along with the compressed live video frames. At the media server, the online training and super-resolution inference operate in parallel. The online training learns new features of a video stream online with received patches from the streamer and updates the freshly trained DNN to super-resolution processor. The online training approach, however, involves solving non-trivial challenges. First, the high-quality patches that a client transmits share the ingest side bandwidth with live video. Allocating large bandwidth for training patches can improve super-resolution. However, it leaves less bandwidth for live video, which can cause quality degradation. To address the challenge, we introduced the Quality Optimizing Scheduler that effectively balances the allocation of omnic bandwidth between training patches and live video. Second, Ingest Server must support large number of streams. For example, there are average 90,000 concurrent streams on Twitch. If we naively dedicate one GPU for online training to each stream, LiveNAS can only provide benefit of online training to the limited number of concurrent streams. Therefore, efficient resource use for online training is required. To address the challenge, we introduced the Content Adapted Trainer. Now, I'll briefly explain the two design components. The goal of Quality Optimizing Scheduler is to allocate bandwidth use between the video and training patches that results in maximum video quality. Since we observed that the optimization goal is concave function, our Quality Optimizing Scheduler applies gradient ascent to find patch betrayed that leads to maximum video quality. Then the scheduler updates the target bitrate of patch and video respectively. The goal of Content Adaptive Trainer is to improve the resource efficiency of the online training. Our Content Adaptive Trainer suspends the training when it detects the saturation in the training gain and resumes training when it detects the scene or content change. In this way, LiveNAS is able to adapt the amount of training time to the real-time quality gain. Putting the design components all together, here is the overview of LiveNAS system. There are two additional design components that I have not talked about in this video, but they are explained in the 20-minute video. LiveNAS is implemented on top of the state-of-the-art open-source ingest framework WebRTC. Besides the WebRTC, LiveNAS design components can be implemented on top of any ingest framework since it is agnostic to video codec and transport layer. We evaluated LiveNAS by answering the following three questions. I will not go into the details since it is explained in the 20-minute video. To summarize the results, first, LiveNAS outperforms WebRTC by average 1.96 dB in PSNR under a constrained network environment. Second, LiveNAS delivers reliable quality gain with using only 25% of GPU resource compared to the continuous training. And finally, LiveNAS produces 12 to 69% QA improvement for live stream viewers. Before ending this talk, I would like to show you a demo. The left half is what WebRTC delivers under a network constrained environment, and the right half is what LiveNAS delivers under the same environment. You can see that video is much clearer in LiveNAS. To sum up, I have briefly talked about three things in this talk. First, LiveNAS is a new live video ingest framework that enhances the original stream's quality via online learning. Second, LiveNAS introduces novel design components, including quality optimizing scheduler and content adaptive trainer. And finally, LiveNAS produces significant QA improvement for live stream viewers. More information can be found in our website. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them during the live Q&A session. Cool. Uh, thanks, Jan. The first question uh, on Slack is from Nitin uh, at Facebook, and uh, and the question is that uh, is on is on is on two part on bandwidths, which was the breakdown of the bandwidth usage for the live video stream as opposed to the training patches. And the second is when the trainer suspends the training, uh, do you continue uploading the samples or do you just suspend the uploading too to save bandwidth? 
Um, first of all, thank you for the uh, question. So um, actually the ratio of bandwidth use between the live video stream and training patches depends on the content and the available bandwidth. And um, in our evaluation, for example, on average, training patches um, take up about five to 10% of the available bandwidth. And for the second part of the question, um, after the system suspends the training, our system constantly unloads the samples with um, minimal bitrate of 25 kilobit per second uh, to constantly validate the DNA code T and detect the uh, content changes. And um, finally, when the content change is detected, the system um, re-bootstraps and starts to send more patches. The second question we have is from Zhaoning Kong on Zoom. The, the question is that the content of a uh, super resolution network is essentially doing video compression, uh, which is training and testing on the same video. In this case, how is it conceptually different than DNN-based video compression? Um, actually, that's a really good point. Um, yeah, uh, as, as um, as it mentions that uh, content aware as super resolution your ever is essentially uh, doing the video compression, um, which is uh, training and testing on the same uh, video. And um, uh, the difference between the DNA based video compression and the super, uh, super resolution neural network is that um, um, it processes the video frames on the, uh, actually it's, it's a super agile neural network is a, a different kind of a, a new codec that um, um, upscales the uh, low resolution video on the uh, end device. I think that's the uh, main difference between the DNA compress, compression and the super resolution. Okay, okay, thank you. And uh, maybe we'll take one more question is also on Zoom, it's from Marco. Uh, the question is for the presented PSNR gains, did you use the same or different videos to train? And how much training data did you need to get these results? Um, so uh, we didn't use the same or uh, same uh, video to train. We, we, tra we actually trained the, uh, our we actually did the online training um, with a, a real-time uh, environment. So, uh, as we de as we do the online training, at the same time we update the super resolution processor. So, it is all done in the online uh, manner. And uh, for the second question, um, as I mentioned, uh, the training data required for the online training actually depends on the content and the available bandwidth. So. Uh, as I introduced in the video, we have a quality optimizing scheduler that um, allocates the amount of patch, patches required for the online training at the runtime. So uh, it changes, uh, it, uh, changes uh, depending on the content and the available bandwidth. Yeah. Cool, just that was a follow up question on the training itself was that, did you do the online training from scratch or do some fine tuning of some model? This was a question from Chen Yu, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a really good question. Um, our system uh, basically starts from the generic DNA model, which is trained on the standard benchmark uh, data set. But we actually did the evaluation uh, on um, starting from the scratch model and uh, our evaluation shows that uh, it still provides a, a reliable quality gain uh, compared to the pre-trained DNs. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure there are more. There are many more questions actually on Slack, Slack as well as on the Q and A on Zoom. So, Jiang, please uh, make sure you, you know, follow up with those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there are some questions on uh, the Zoom Q and A. So, from Poli Huang, interesting approach and nice talk. The question is, does one need to be careful sampling the high resolution patches? Uh, I.e., is it simply periodically or uh, transmitted or triggered by the motions events in the video stream? 
Thank you for the question. Uh, Lifna samples the patches uh, periodically, periodi periodically when the network queue is empty. And we don't use the motion or events information. So I guess uh, she's asking uh, whether uh, there's anything different uh, if, it, uh, if the system detects any scene changes? Uh, we use the PSNR information to sample a valuable patch in the videos. And this, uh, I think that will answer the question. Okay, uh, another question from Zili Meng. Are there any statistics about the additional operating expenses of Live NAS for introducing uh, new servers and GPUs? Uh, in, we have answer, uh, we have cal calculated the uh, expenses by using the additional GPUs in the paper, and you can check the uh, exact amount of expense in the paper. So I have a follow-up question on that uh, from uh, from a slide, I think. So here uh, you try to save. Uh, the training uh, cost, right, uh, by you know, uh, adapting to the content. If the content changes frequently, you would use more GPUs. But if the content doesn't uh, change frequently, you would use less uh, GPU. But have you thought about how we might, uh, how you might uh, reduce uh, the GPU usage in the uh, SR inference, super resolution inference? That's a really good point. Since the video frames bear large redundancy between frames, super resolution inference can be selectively done only on the key frames of the video, and result can be reused for other non-key frames. In this way, we can also further reduce the resource use for DNN inference, and, but we didn't cover this in this work. Thank you. Okay, so Paul Yu Huang has a follow-up question, and I, th I think uh, this question uh, appeared many times. Uh, it's been asked by people like Nitin uh, from Facebook. So the question is, uh, uh, how do you measure, did you measure how much bandwidth was used for live streaming versus the training patches? Is there anything done to the training patches to reduce uh, its bandwidth consumption? I think there is a connection problem. Young Mogor Jehong, are you guys there? Okay. Uh, okay, did you hear their last question or is there a problem? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, should I answer the question again? Oh, yes. Yeah, we, we haven't heard anything from you. Ah, okay. So the sure. ratio the, so the ratio of bandwidth usage between live video stream and training patches depends on the content and available bandwidth. In our evaluation, for example, for one megabit piece available bandwidth, training patches take up about 5 to 10% of available bandwidth. 